Sorry. During this time of Advent, we are all called to share our light with the world. If you are chosen, may you feel the blessing of being asked. There was something I always wished for, but dared not speak it aloud. Yet, I couldn't stop believing that it might be right over the horizon. Like the first dawn of light, I felt it occasionally stir inside of me. I just didn't know where to find it. Peace. That was the wish. Peace on earth, peace in my soul, peace even when peace didn't make any sense in the world. Was it even possible? Peace that shook free all the burdens that clung so tightly to us, that gave assurance when the world rumbled with wars and rumors of wars. Could there be that kind of peace? Then, like all the best surprises do, that peace I dared not hope for too hard, dared not dream about too much, came in the very way I wished peace might come. Unexpectedly, in the restless cries of a baby, against the odds, peace to those unable to find it, peace to those who weren't even searching for it, peace swaddled, offered, gifted, the Messiah. Please join me in prayer. We have prepared our homes and our gifts, Lord, but we need help in preparing our spirits to receive your message of peace. Free us from the stresses and strains of this time and place your peace, which passes all our understanding, in our hearts. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. It is great to have you here on this second Sunday of Advent. And here today we light the candle of peace, and we hope that's exactly what you experience today. Uh, whether you've been worshiping with us for a long time, maybe you... Uh, uh, are just new and are coming to join us for the very first time or following us online, it is great to have you here. I would like to uh, invite any of the children to go to Sunday school. They can meet Miss Carol in the back. Wonderful things she has planned. So a couple of announcements that I'd like to share. I'd like to go through the Sunday schedule. Um, you're going to learn a little bit uh, more about it during the offering time, the mission moment time, but I'll share a little bit about how uh, the live nativity and everything that surrounded that happened on Friday. But we still have a lot of Advent to, uh, events to, to go through still. So I wanted to share with you once again, we've had these wonderful cards printed up, and on the back is uh, our cantata and Christmas Eve and regular service schedules. So it's meant... Maybe to hand to a friend, uh, put, give to a neighbor, maybe put in a neighbor's mailbox. It's just a, like kind of a, a wonderful invitation to give during this holiday time about everything that's going on. So our cantata this year is happening on Sunday, December the 22nd, Christmas Eve services. Um, we have a family service at 4, 4 p.m. And it is geared for kind of... Uh, Four, five, six, seven-year-olds, but uh, if you have a young spirit... Or, or if, you, if, you, if you feel four, five, six, or seven in your heart. That's right. If you have a young spirit, we would love for you to come and enjoy that service um, with the younger folks. We do have adults come to that without any children, but it is definitely a family service. We have um, interactive um, times together um, as we go through worship and um, we will have some kind of lighting um, of the candles, but probably not with real fire. So um, just come and enjoy um, that fun time. Then uh, we are going to be providing a, uh, a, a holiday meal on Christmas Eve as well. It's going to start between 6 and 6.30. And so if uh, you are somebody who might have a busy Christmas season, but on Christmas Eve... You know, maybe your extended family is off other places or, you know, come and spend some time with your church family. Uh, we'll serve you a, a wonderful meal that night. It's, it's all been taken care of, so it won't cost you a thing. Come that night uh, and then our what time uh, we're going to start probably between six and six thirty. 
uh, I'm waffling <coughs> on this too because I want to make it, we, we'll, have, we'll do a couple of uh, fun things during that time together, um, but want to let you out in enough time that if you're going to stay for the 9 o'clock service, that you can come in and get a good seat and uh, won't be w waiting around for a whole super long time. So, uh, first evening service is at 9 o'clock. If you want to hear the choir, the bells, you know, all that kind of stuff, we'll have communion that night. We'll have candlelight experience. Uh, that's all at 9 o'clock. And then if you're somebody who um, really loves to be in, in, in church when midnight comes and Christmas actually, uh, actually happens, we're back here at 11 o'clock and that service ends at midnight. Um, uh, lots of special music that night. We'll also serve communion as well, and we will have a candlelight service as well. So, A quick reminder that the dog Christmas party is from 6 to 8 on Tuesday. So if you've been involved with the dog group or are interested in that, feel free to come out on Tuesday night from 6 to 8, dinner provided. And then after being here for, uh, I think, 16 hours on Christmas Eve, the office is going to be closed on Christmas Day and the day after for us to recover a little bit. So uh, just to have that in the back of your mind, the school's out as well. Uh, if you would like to, uh, we, we, we've got 30 point setters in here uh, right now. Um, if you want to sponsor one of those in honor or memory of someone, uh, these are the sheets. They're out in the narthex and uh, we always compile those, put them on a nice uh, memorial sheet or honor sheet uh, for not only the last Sunday of um, uh, Advent, which will be the 22nd, uh, but also on Christmas Eve as well. So these are available out in the Narthex. And uh, if you wanted to do something that's going to be a little bit longer term, you can also, uh, you can, instead, you can also give it to your donation towards the Perpetual Memorial Trust Fund, which is something that is uh, ongoing, which is in its name, it's, it's perpetual. Um, Finally, uh, we do have our giving envelopes for the new year available, and they're out in the narthex as well. Uh, Want to just share with you that, you know, the major so many of our, our congregation now is giving electronically. Uh, that's just, you know, been one thing that we've had to adjust to as a church, and so we ordered much less physical envelopes. We have enough for everybody who wants one, but if your number has changed... Uh, it's probably because you had a higher number and we ordered less envelopes, and so that might be the reason. If you do not find your name in there and want to make sure to still receive envelopes, we have uh, a sheet that you can sign right there, and we will make sure that your envelope name is added by next week, okay? So once again, out in the narthex, as you're going into the heritage room, they're on a, I'll alphabetize on a cart on the left-hand side. Uh, it's great to have everybody here today. Once again, second Sunday of Advent, and uh, Jesus welcomes peace into your life on this day. And so I hope that that's what you receive, whether it's through a piece of music, a prayer that you might hear, some piece of scripture read, uh, the spoken word. May peace reside in your hearts as we worship together today. This song is only about 10, 15 years old, so it's pretty nice. How do you capture the wind on the water? How do you count all the stars in the sky? How can you measure the love of a mother? And how can you write down a baby's first cry. Candlelight, angel light, firelight and star glow shine on his cradle till breaking of dawn. Gloria, glorious in a Chelsea's day. Oh. Angels are singing, the Christ child is born. <laughs> Shepherds and wise men will kneel and adore him. Seraphim round him. His vigil will keep. Nations.
nations proclaim him their Lord and their Savior, but Mary will hold him and sing him to sleep. Candlelight, angel light, firelight and star glow shine on his cradle till breaking of dawn. Glorious, glorious, in a Chelsea stale, angels are singing, the Christ child is born. Find him in Bethlehem laying in a manger. Christ our Redeemer asleep in the hay. Godhead incarnate and hope of salvation. A child with his mother the first Christmas day. Candlelight, angel light, firelight and star glow shine on his cradle till breaking of dawn. Glorious, glorious, in a Chelsea stale. Angels are singing, the Christ child is born. Angels are singing, the Christ child is born. Let us pray. Lord, hear us this day as we open our hearts and our spirits to you. These times in which we live are often confusing and fearful. We are pushed to make preparations for a season which is supposed to bring hope and peace, yet we crowd it with obligations and stresses and shut the door to your healing love and compassion. We find ourselves being on edge, fretful, wondering if we have done enough, can do enough. Lord, if we see one more list of things to do, we think we might scream. We have made list after list in preparation for the holiday season. We have shopped until we feel we might drop. We have baked, decorated, sent cards, planned festivities, gone to concerts, school performances, gotten ready for the church presentations. We are in a whirlwind of preparation. And then... Just when we think we cannot take more, your answer, you answer our fears with your voice. Peace be still. Help us to hear you. Slow us down. Encourage us to take some time to listen rather than shout, to stop and rest rather than run. Cause us to look around at situations and people who are in need and to place our focus on helping them. For it is in helping your people and reaching out in love that we will find true peace. What we have forgotten is to place your presence in our lives. You bring us hope and peace. You remind us that it is we who have created and succumbed to hectic schedules. Slow us down, Lord. Bring us again to those moments in which we are not running lists of obligations through our heads. As we have brought the names and needs of people near and dear to us into your presence for your healing and comfort, remind us that we also stand in need of your healing love. Help us to focus on you and the gift of your beloved son, Jesus Christ. Help us to take a big breath and to exhale slowly, letting the anxiety and stress out. Fill our lives with your peace as we continue on this Advent journey. Jesus. You said, I am bringing you peace, not the kind of peace the world would give you. My peace I give to you now and forever. Be at peace. Know God's love is given for you. For we ask all this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today comes out of the Gospel of Luke, and we find ourselves in the very, very first chapter, near the end of the first chapter, but the first chapter nonetheless. And we haven't even gotten into the part of the story that uh, announces Jesus' birth. Here we hear a song sung by Zechariah, and it is announcing the birth of John. Now, remember, that's going to be Jesus' cousin, who will be John the Baptist, who will prepare the way for the Lord. And so, uh, hear these words, starting in verse 68. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And he has said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. The oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the path of peace. God's word for you, God's people. So there was a plea that was put out and it was to have artists paint a depiction of what they considered peace. Now, there's a lot of people who participated. Hundreds of paintings came in, and the people who had to make the decision wanted to pare them down to the final two. And so they stuck them together side by side up on a wall to let the people decide. Now, the first painting was very pastoral. It was of this lake. You could tell it was a calm day because you could see the reflection of everything behind it in the water. There were no waves or anything like that. There were white billowy clouds up in the sky. There was sunlight and blue sky overhead. And in the foreground, there were all of these animals all coexisting together. Some drinking out of the lake, some eating from the long grass that was surrounding the lake. And then off to the side, you could see just a hint of two people sitting up on a rock overlooking that pastoral lake. Now, the second painting was very different. Second painting in the foreground had this massive cliff. And through the cliff were these big cracks and inside of those cracks, and I know you, many of you have seen pictures of things like this before, seeds had fallen in there and there had been trees that have struggled to take root. They were sticking in and out of the cracks and they were struggling to uh, grow out of them uh, up over uh, the side of the cliff. Now, in the distance, it wasn't like raining or storming in the, the, the foreground, but in the background you could see that it was coming. You could see a hint of black clouds, a little bit of lightning in those black clouds. And then there it was right there in the middle. There was this nest. And you could tell it was something that the artist wanted you to pay attention to because of their use of lighting. And so there's this nest growing out of this precarious bush growing out of the side of this cliff. And you could tell that the bird that was resting in this nest, that there was something underneath 
Maybe some chicks that had already been born that this bird was keeping warm. Or maybe some eggs that were going to later hatch. But you could tell that there was some kind of contentment in the bird that was sitting in that nest. And having these two next to each other with the question, where do you find peace, really kind of hits you in the face. Because, you know, the first thing you'd want to just gravitate towards that first painting. But that would be short-sightedness, at least as far as the kind of peace that God wants us to experience. Because so often what we think of as peace is like those perfect moments that everything has to exist for you to be able to feel the presence of that moment. B back in Indiana, I had this group of people that I used to, with whom I used to bike uh, uh, two or three times a week. And we go some long distances. And the joke was that if we ever had allowed ourselves that there, there's maybe four, maybe five days out of an entire year that it's perfect weather to go out. It means that if given the opportunity, there was always an excuse not to go if you thought of one. It's in the middle of the summer, it's too hot. Or it's in the middle of winter, it's too cold. Maybe it's too windy. Oh my goodness, that headwind is too much, we won't get anywhere. Or there's a possibility of rain. Or, or, or. And so that's the point of the two paintings. I mean, do we wait to go out? Or to experience peace when everything is just perfect across the board. You have no kind of turmoil going on in our life. Or does peace show up in our life despite all of that? When the storm's on the horizon. When we're perched precariously out of the side of a cliff. And yet we find safety there. Right there in the most unimaginable place. See, here's, here's the point. You know... Um, Peace is meant to be felt despite our, sick, our, our, our circumstances. Those, experience, those who really experience peace have love in their hearts even when turmoil surrounds them on all sides. Now, last week we lit the candle of hope. And I want you to know, you know, it goes hope, peace, joy, love. There is a reason that they are ordered that way, and I hope you come out today at least why those first two candles are ordered the way they are, because you can't have peace unless you start with some hope to begin with. So last week we lit the candle of lo hope, our, and it kind of started our, out our anticipation preaching series. Now there is a lot about the word hope and anticipation and if you take it a step part farther, expectation, which are all very similar to one another. So hope is really something that's more like a wish. I hope this might change. I hope this might happen. In other words, I wish this could be different. There's a lot of wrapped up in there. The circumstances, that circumstances, we hope that they might change in our life if they're going bad for us. We hope that we might have trust in a different kind of future. Anticipation, however, is looking forward, maybe with some expectation in our life, to what is coming. We're looking forward to something that's coming. So we look forward to Christmas Day with anticipation. We know that it's on the horizon, and we look forward to its arrival. Now, that leads us to this word, expectation. Expectation is the, is the assumption... That something's actually going to happen. It's more than just hope. Hope leads to anticipation, which it le leads to expectation. That something's actually going to happen. And so I'll give you an example. When, um, when, when, when two people decide that uh, they want to have a, a child together, they first start out with hope, don't they? At that point, it's just a wish. Then there leads to the anticipation of something that might be different. And then one day, God willing, we find out that we're pregnant. And what do we say 
when a woman's pregnant that they are expecting. It's the expectation. It's, it, it go, one goes to the other that goes to the other. And it builds up in this expectation that we are expectant that this child is going to come into our lives. And I believe that is exactly what is happening with Zechariah and Elizabeth in this passage. Hope has led to anticipation, has led to expectation. So let me, let me share you about these figures that find themselves at the very beginning of Luke if you don't know much about them. Today there's a man named Zechariah. And the passage that we read, that I read for you, is actually a song. When you look it up in your Bible, it's all indented. He sings this. He doesn't just say it. Now, Zechariah was an elderly priest who was unable to bear children his whole life with his wife Elizabeth. Yet God promised him that they would have a child together. Have we heard this story before? They're too old. But I promise this to you, and you're going to have a child together, and what happens? Every single time, the recipients of the promise don't believe that it can actually come true. And they would have a child together, and Zechariah was told to name this new child John. So the sign of this promise was that God would leave this doubting priest unable to speak until his son was born. So Elizabeth... And Zechariah, way far uh, into their uh, older years, and she finds out that she's going to have a baby. And God silences Zechariah's tongue. Now, I see some women out there going, man, I wish that could have worked out that way for me. <laughs> Zechariah is unable to speak all the way up until the time that John is born. And so, what is so miraculous is that in our, in our passage today, we read that Zechariah is in fact able to speak when, because people ask him, what are you going to name your son? And just a couple verses before the passage that we, we uh, 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 read today, in verse 46, or 64, it reports that when God finally does, they call it loosen Zechariah's tongue, the Spirit equips him to break out in song to praise the Lord. So think about this. I mean, nine months of silence. And finally, his son is born. His tongue is loosened. And the first thing that he does is he sings. And he sings a song of praise to God. He sings of this declaration of God's purpose as a message of hope to a world that was in danger of losing hope. And so... This whole passage ends with these words, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, that it might guide our feet in the path of peace. And that leads to today's candle lighting, the anticipation of peace. You see, we can't receive peace unless we are hoping for something different. Now, I want you to know that by the time that uh, Luke finishes his gospel, as we have it today, the Romans have destroyed the temple at Jerusalem by this time. And news about Jesus had begun to spread outside the area called Palestine to the pockets around farther reaches of the Roman Empire. And so in this context, no less than in the decades that we find Elizabeth and Mary preparing to give birth to their sons. Remember Elizabeth, John's mother, Mary, Jesus' mother. That the message of God's peace comes into a world that is much more familiar with conflict, much more familiar with warfare. We sing songs at Advent time and Christmas time about everything being calm, everything being peaceful, everything being bright, joy to the world. But that's not the world of Zechariah and Elizabeth, and it certainly wasn't the world of Mary. Things weren't calm and bright. They were chaotic. 
which is why Jesus is born in the first place. If everything would have been perfect, there would have been no reason for the event to happen in the first place. So by this time, the word of Jesus has spread to the farther reaches of the Roman Empire. And even when Jesus and John are preparing to be born, the world around them is a chaotic one. And so this word of peace that Zechariah speaks, God's peace stands in stark contrast to anything that the Caesars of Rome could have offered at the time during whose reign John and Jesus are both born into. They both live into this uh, state of, of war and conflict. And remember, they both meet violent ends. John the Baptist, executed by beheading, and Jesus crucified on a cross. Now, I want you to know, if, if you want to really find some good verses about peace for your life, Luke's the place to go to because if you take all of the Gospels and put them all, to, uh, all the other three together, so that'd be Matthew, Mark, and John, if you put them all together, they would not all together have the word peace in them as many times as Luke does. And in Luke, it really is kind of bookends. Remember, we find ourselves at the very, very beginning of the story here in chapter 1. It's God's message of peace is like bookends found at both the beginning and the end of Luke's gospel. Here near the beginning, Zechariah sings that God will guide our feet into the way of peace. And his prophecy is fulfilled near the conclusion of his gospel. When the risen Christ stands among his disciples, he's standing among his followers. And at this point... They don't know that he has risen yet. They have locked themselves inside of a room because they are scared. And what's the first thing that he announces to them? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Yesterday was Pearl Harbor Day. Happened on December the 7th, 1941. And it too started out like that first painting, just another routine weekend. The aircraft carriers were all at dockside that day in Hawaii, and the crews were enjoying the day with rest and relaxation. On that day, the skies were clear, the sun was shining, and the weather was quite beautiful. It was a picture-perfect moment of peace. But then something happened that brought disaster into the lives of many. Within a couple hours, 3,077 men would be killed or missing in action. The United States would lose eight ba huge battleships. Six major airfields would be destroyed along with most of their aircraft. It all started around 7 a.m. that morning. And the story goes that uh, offshore on an island, there were two people watching the radar that saw all of a sudden all of these blips on the radar. And so they did what they were supposed to and they told the lieutenant that was the next in charge. And it was just the three there that day about what they were saw. And he wrote it off as something that you didn't need to worry about. And so he didn't report it. It didn't go any further. Now in those 50 minutes, there would have been time to prepare for the arrival of all of those Japanese airships. There would have been time to get all those, of those collateral um, uh, casualties in a place of safety, in a, 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 a place that would have saved them on that moment. The battleships could have been readied. You know, one person on that day could have made all of the difference in the world on Pearl Harbor Day. Now, I want to flip that around and talk about that in terms of peace because I think peace has the same kind of effect if we allow it to. You see, peace is gifted into our lives. And if it comes to us as a gift, Jesus wants that to, us to share that with someone else. Now, we don't have to do that. We can receive that beautiful wrapped gift and just put it back under the tree and maybe save it for later or open it up at another time. We don't have to do anything with it. But I want to tell you, you know, I know I share this every year, but I think it's so important. There's a difference between a present and a gift. 
So Santa Claus brings us presents, always asks us, what would you like for Christmas? A present is something that you give to somebody because they ask for it, but gifts do not function that way. Gifts are given because we want the, uh, somebody else to have it. And so Jesus doesn't come to us as a present. We don't ask for it. God wants us to have that gift. And God wants us to have that gift of peace today. It comes to you beautifully wrapped, all ready for you to open. And Jesus doesn't want you to keep it to yourself. To share that gift with those around you. And there might be people that surround you in your life that they will only be able to receive that gift in and through you because you have first received it from God. And so we stand in this world that is chaotic still. I mean, since Pearl Harbor, we have been far from experiencing, uh, uh, from experiencing continual peace. I mean, since then, World War II has ended. We've had the Korean War. We've had Vietnam. We've been at Desert Storm. We've gone to war in Afghanistan. People have gone to Iraq. I don't know how things are going to unfold in Ukraine or what's going to happen with, between Israel and Gaza and the Palestinian states or the people who are dying every day uh, over in Haiti. Or in the Sudan, it goes on and on and on and on. I know, though, that one person can make a difference. Just unlike Pearl Harbor Day, you can make a difference to open up that gift of peace and receive it into your life. Because remember, there is no peace in the world, but Jesus wants to give you the gift that doesn't exist in a world that really doesn't even want you to have it. Peace is a state of mind. Those who experience peace, they have lots of chaos going on in their life. They have lots of turmoil. But that light shines through and shines on your nest. Because those who experience peace has lo have love in their hearts even when turmoil surrounds them. It's not just the wish. It's not just the hope. But the anticipated expectation that God will be present just as God always has been. Because the reality is, is we know where the story leads. Christ is both present and is coming all at the same time. In the end, Zachariah's song is not simply a way to announce the birth of a son that he didn't think was possible. His son, John the Baptist, but rather to proclaim God's faithfulness and God's peace. And dur so during this season of Advent, as we await the birth of the Savior of the world, we can pray together with Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord of Israel, who is both here with us now and is coming. I want to end with a poem that I found this past week. It's not well known, but it spoke to me about this God who is present with us now and yet is still coming. This is written by Callie Tarana. Peace is a gift to be received. May we receive it today. Peace is here and peace is coming. Peace is a person and his name is Jesus. And so when we are anxious, may peace be our comfort. When we are unsure, may peace be our teacher. When we are lost, may peace be our guide. When we are hurting, may peace be a healing balm. Peace is here and peace is coming. May peace be our sword in a world filled with conflict and heartache. May peace be our shield when life is harsh and lonely. May we remember that peace is not the absence of trouble, but the ability to live wholly and completely in our present circumstances. Peace is here. And peace is coming. In the waiting, he is our anticipated peace. In the struggle, he is our prince of peace. In the incomprehensible, he is our peace that passes all understanding. In the injustice, he is our covenant of peace. In the longing, 
He is our perfect peace. May we know Jesus, our only source of peace. Peace is here, and peace is coming. Amen. So I will tell you where I found peace this past week, and that was Friday night. If you are here and a part of that experience, what an amazing night together. Uh, I want to show you a picture of our live nativity uh, folks. They braved the cold out there that night. And uh, you know what? I didn't count. I stopped counting people or cars. All I know is that for more than an hour, maybe close to an hour and a half, Every parking spot in our parking lot, both in the back, in the side, on the side uh, behind the church here, and people were parking in the office park next door, every <coughs> spot was filled. And to my knowledge, there was not an unkind word the whole night. It was like this perfect moment that we were able to create for families right here in our own community that spoke peace into their life. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to switch to the next picture. I took this myself because this is where I found peace. This is, this is one of the three people that brought the, uh, the, the animals to the petting zoo. So this little baby cow, this is a, a Scottish Highland cow. She's two weeks old. So she's wearing her own hoodie and has a blanket over her. They, they sleep with her in the house right now. <laughs> um, and so uh, she has her all snuggled up. And uh, the amount of young kids that came over and just wanted to pet that baby, there's something about new life that just calls us to, to act and be different. And so um, Erica's going to share, because I never got a chance the whole night to come inside. So tell us about what was going on in here. Well, we want to just give a huge thanks to all of the volunteers. <coughs> um, I know that we got, we had 10 tables of crafts, and there were about 100 to 125 crafts at each table, and some even ran out around 7.30. So uh, we had upped our numbers from last year, and we'll up them again next year. Um, but between the people actually in the nativity, helping to run the nativity, the um, looking after the animals, um, all of those that donated cookies and crafts and time and energy and were making hot cocoa and keeping cookies and cocoa flowing and helping with Santa. We definitely had over um, 40 volunteers here that night as well. And so we couldn't do it. It is definitely a church family event. And so thank you to everyone who jumped in. If you didn't get a chance this year, there will always be next year. But there was just movement in the building the entire evening. And uh, I have no idea how many people came through, but um, I only heard positives and uh, joy. So I am glad of that. You know, as you think about it, you know, it's, it's, it's one of only a few, if not the only Christmas event we, we do here in Oakville, that you don't have to go off somewhere else. And <coughs> not only that we have like this two-hour experience, and it really does take the full two hours to kind of do and see everything, to get come through the line and get your photo taken with Mr. and Mrs. Claus. And uh, we saw some wonderful time families spending together eating cookies and drinking cocoa together. But how many times do you get to do something like that that it doesn't cost families anything? You're just come and you're just are able to be together. And it's because of the mission that we offer here. And so once again, a big thanks. As you think about how you'd like to um, just support the mission and ministry here at St. Paul's, uh, we always have offering plates when you leave. If you are an electronic giver, uh, you can go to sp4u.org or you can mail in a donation uh, to the address that's on the screens. And I'm going to invite Marcia to come up and she is going to bless our offering for this second Sunday of Advent. Let us pray. God of all joy, we give thanks each time we remember your gifts in our lives. Our gratitude extends to the ways we can use our gifts of time, talent, and treasures. May your boundless wisdom compel us to use our energies in ways that will share the most love in our world. Amen. We have all kinds of things ready for you to be picked up. If you haven't picked up your wreath, 
Uh, we have um, Charlie Brown trees. We do. We have about 10 or 12 extra. A um, couple of people mentioned, oh, those are so cute. I wish I had ordered one. Well, we have a few extra if you would still like one. If not, come and pick yours up along with your Cardinals calendars. Don't forget they're in the gym to be picked up right next to each other. And also, uh, we still have the Christmas cards out. Uh, if you'd like to peruse that table on the way out, if you're still sending like... Uh, hard, you know, not, not electronic, not electronic Christmas cards. So all of that, uh, sales of that, they're um, 100% go to our ministry over at the Veterans Hospital. And so you can go and peruse that as well. Um, we have a SALT event right after church. If you are here or have one that you're bringing for the SALT event, um, we will just be meeting in the gym in a couple of minutes. I need just a couple of minutes usually to get my act together and we'll head out to pieces. If you were visiting with us today, we have these envelopes in the pews in front of you. Um, no need to put anything inside. We're just glad that you are worshiping with us. We would love to have you let us know that you are here and you can fill that out and put that in the offering plate on the way out. You know, there was actually a survey that was taken and uh, most people, if given the, you know, the wish for something in their life, they actually answered peace. They wished that they had peace in their life. So I want to just tell you that that gift is waiting for you to unwrap today. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. And it comes from the one who loves you above all others. May you unwrap it. Share that gift with your own spirit and then let it spread to others. So may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you, be gracious to you. And may God lift up God's kindness and favor upon you and give you peace. And the mission of St. Paul's is to be a place of worship, worship refuge, refuge, and, and outreach. outreach. Have a great week.